Hi, this is Billy J. Kramer, and you're listening to Things We Said Today with Ken Michaels and Steve Maranucci. Well, hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly podcast in which we discuss what's going on in the world of the Beatles news-wise. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, and some of you know me for another Beatles program that I host called Every Little Thing, and I'm being joined by my co-host, the man who writes for Beatles Examiner, and that is Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. On today's show, a topic that uh, we kind of knew we had to do. And actually, on the Internet, there's so much buzz about this. And for the most part, probably, I would say, more on the negative side, uh, a new collection being released on the 21st of January. And it is a box set of the Beatles' American Albums. And there are 13 albums all together. It's uh, all the albums that were on the Capitol label and also including A Hard Day's Night, which was on United Artists, and the Hey Jude album, which was on Apple. Let's, so, let's do one correction. Not all the albums, because Hollywood Bowl is not there. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Correct me all you want. Early on, you're already picking on me. Anyway, <laughs> so um, there's so much to talk about concerning this release, and uh, I guess most of the talk has been that uh, there's a lot of criticism because of the fact that, for, from what we've been told, and I've only heard the sampler that we've been given here, and Steve, we're going to have to rely on Steve's ears <laughs> on this show heavily. Uh-oh. Put, Uh-oh. All, put all the weight on him. Put well, all... Let me, let me get, get into a little background before we go into the, the detail on the, on the songs. Okay. It really started, the controversy really started after an article I printed that apparently was taken, and I, obviously we have not seen the, the set yet, um, that was taken from the booklet in the set that talks about how the, album, how the set was put together. And the important note is that um, they did not use the original mixes for the set. Mm-hmm. What they've done is for the ba- the base mixes for the set are the remasters from 2009. From 2009. And that did not make a whole lot of people very happy. Mhm. And that was an article that I printed and that got response everywhere. I could not believe how much response, you know, I heard about that on various boards, you know, everybody was complaining that oh my god, they're not doing this uh, historically right and that's basically true i think the the important point to remember or at least that somebody brought up to me today and and i it's it's really a point i had not considered but it's it it appears to make sense is that this is not an archival release it's a historical release which i know that's kind of you know slicing it right down the middle there but they're basically putting these out for the for the fiftieth anniversary for the general public to have. Mm-hmm. Now that does not mean, and we'll get into this in a little more detail now, uh, in a couple minutes actually, that they've abandoned the the reverb mixes. They have not. But remember, and and this is something else that uh, you know that uh, I got into today. Everybody hated those mixes in the sixties. Hated them. And, and Dave know. Dexter, wait, who wait. did them, has been vilified to no end. And, you know, what does this set do to those mixes? Does it, you know, glorify them? I don't think you'd, you... There's nothing you can do to glorify them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me interrupt this. Go ahead. Now, correct me if I'm wrong here, mm-hmm. but when these mixes came out in the 60s, we didn't have the imports to compare them to. No, that, that's what, absolutely true, because... You know, that's how we heard them, mm-hmm. you know. So nobody was complaining back then. It's only later, in retrospect, historically, when you look back, that there was so much criticism on these mixes. 
Now, on the other hand, the when I listen to with the Beatles, even now, my mind goes back to Meet the Beatles because that's the way I heard those songs for so long. Mm. And it's great to hear the songs in the order that they were that that I'm familiar with. You know, the thing, and I think what Capital it may it, it seems to make sense that what Capital has done here is tried to replicate that memory. They have not completely abandoned the mixes, however. What you're not getting, you're not getting a box set that's just remastered, reshuffled. That's not what ha- what's happening here. So for anybody that's worried about that, that's not what's happening. They've, you know, basically, like I said, what they've done is they basically use the, the remasters as the basis for the set, but that doesn't mean the remasters have been completely abandoned. Now, so this is just to address the 50th anniversary and nothing else. That's what, uh, and I'll, 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 I should say, I should give it, give him credit because rather than take all the credit for what he said, it was Al Sussman who who discussed this with me. So, I like the way he worded that, though. Mm-hmm. I think that's fairly accurate. It, but it, it, the whole uh, it, there's an article I wrote. It, the headline reads: Be- "Beatles label says they work to preserve mixes." used in U.S. albums box. And that's where that information came from. And so, I mean, they, they said uh, the brux of the whole thing says, while doing so would have been the easiest way to go, it would have not created the best possible listening experience. In an effort to preserve the original intentions of the band and the producers, the masters used in most cases are the same as the stereo and mono remasters released in 2009 all approved by George Martin and the Beatles. All du- duophonic mixes have been replaced with the approved stereo mixes when available, and some mono mixes in the few instances where no stereo mix exists. No true stereo mix exists. But that's actually, according to what I found, is not exactly true, because I did find a couple of examples where the capital versions were used. So it isn't a complete reshuffle. Okay, we'll get to that in a few minutes. But where did you hear that they haven't abandoned the the idea of uh, maybe picking up where they left off with Volume Three? Well, there, it had been Volume Three had been rumored for a long, long time, and in fact, as recently as just before the, you know, just before the announcement when Ca- when Capital announced the U.S. Albums Box, I had written that it, uh, something was in the works because all the U.S. albums had been popping up online for say, uh, for pre-order on Amazon in England and Amazon in Japan. Mm-hmm. And and like I said, this has been something that... Uh, this has been on, on people's wish lists for a long, long time. Everybody was hoping... Everybody was hoping, actually, that Hollywood Bowl would be in there. And actually, I would have loved to have seen that myself. But... Obviously, they didn't. They didn't do Hollywood Bowl. You know, there's just so. Uh, it, like I said, it had been discussed, and I had. I know I had talked about it with various people at Capitol through the years, and you know, it was it was dead in the water at one point. You know, I mean, the economy the economy didn't help the situation, hmm. and so, I mean, there's all sorts of things that went on, and and everybody was hoping and hoping and hoping and. You know, finally this year they decided to do this for the 50th, and I don't, you know, I don't know what to say. I, I don't want to be judgmental. I mean, I'm glad to see the albums come out. On the on the other hand, I love the Capitol albums, Volume One and Two. Mm-hmm. Um, I think those are those are great sets, even if they, you know, and those do replicate the original mixes, but. Again, I and having not heard the whole set, the whole box set, I don't want to crash down on on the U.S. albums because I haven't heard it. I am looking forward to it because I'm I love those albums and I'm interested to see what they've done with it. And, and I think you are too. Um, but you know, uh, it's just it, it. And the the nice part of these albums is that they're going to have mono and stereo on each one. So. Right, uh, which is which is really nice. I yes, mean, it's which, it's it's helpful we, that the the songs were short enough where you could fit both, you know, twice on the same CDs. Right, yeah. and one thing one thing that was interesting about the Capitol albums, Volume One and Two, is they predated the the mono, you know, the mono box set. So, and actually, 
uh, when those box sets came out in the last decade, one thing that struck me was, <laughs> to me, and, and I know that there are so many people that hate those the the American mixes, mm-hmm. but in some ways it sounded better than the 1987 CDs. Right. That's a good. That's a that's a very good point. They did. They really did. And uh, you know, as you were saying, it was great to have those those uh, albums around. So. Right. But I have both mixed feelings about this. And extreme feelings about this. Okay. But but the mere fact that you brought up the fact that the Capitol has not abandoned the idea of going back and, and putting out Volume 3, and I didn't even know until you told me that there was talk at that time of Hollywood Bowl coming out in there. No, there were rumors about Hollywood Bowl. There was no talk. And I, and, and let me make let me correct the fact. I don't think Volume 3 is an issue anymore. I think this basically kills Volume 3. I don't think there's not going to be a volume three. I think everybody hoped there would be a volume three after volume two, but I don't think it's going to happen now. What would be nice would be to to get Hollywood Bowl, Mm -hmm. um, which is something that I'm still hoping for. But however, um, however, if they're using the 2009 remasters here, if they don't put out volume three, then we're never going to get yesterday and today and revolver. You're getting the, yesterday and today on the on the uh, on the on the U.S. album set. On this set. Yes, you are. But they're not the American masters. Well, we don't know that until we hear it. Okay. We don't know what the, uh, we don't know exactly what's going on. All right. Until we hear it, but just my general feelings about this and the American releases are that, like you, Steve, and like so many people listening to this program, I was brought up on those albums. Mm-hmm. In the 60s, 70s, and all throughout the 80s, up until the CDs came out, this is how I heard the Beatles' music. Mm-hmm. And I was not condemning it. I wasn't even aware until later on that that's not the way the Beatles released it in England. It wasn't until later on in probably the late 70s that I became aware of it when I saw import vinyl albums of the British albums. And I said, yeah, this is interesting. How come there are more songs on these albums? Right. And, you know, so I investigated that. And then I must admit that once the CDs came out, that was the way I listened to the music. I really, for the most part, abandoned the American albums. But that doesn't mean that this shouldn't come out. I think this has so much historical value. And so many people hold these albums near and dear to them and should. This was their exposure to them. They know the songs on these albums, in these sequences, and that's how they think of them. That's what's in their hearts. You know, and, and I was just thinking, one thing that struck me a couple of years ago when I was doing my live show, which is on WNHU in, in West Haven, Connecticut, I always, whenever I play music on my show, I always backtrack and say what albums the songs are on. I always like to do that because a lot of radio stations don't do that. Mm-hmm. But um, I mention... I've just seen a face, and I said, off the help CD. And wouldn't you know, somebody calls me up and said, did you say I've just seen a face is on help? Mm-hmm. I have it on Rubber Soul. Mm-hmm. It's the first song. And this was someone who was a first-generation fan who obviously never bought the CDs in 87, and he's kept the albums, and that's how he listens to the Beatles still to this day. He knows them from the American albums, whether right. you think they're, that's right or wrong. In his heart... I've just seen a face is always going to be a rubber soul song. And for many people listening to the show, that's how they think of it. So these albums have historical value. And, you know, I, there, oh, was yeah, a, absolutely. there was a time when I was a bit of a, you know, of a snob, <laughs> to be uh, very honest about it, when the CDs came out and I said to myself, well, that's the way the Beatles released it. That's the way we should be listening to it. Mm-hmm. But over time, I've come to accept the fact that, hey, <laughs> The Beatles had nothing to do with the American albums coming out, but that's how we were exposed to it. So I certainly believe that this stuff should come out on CD. But for me personally, the only value that these songs have, and I know I, you know, I listen to these songs in this order, in these mm-hmm. sequences, and that's important too. But the most important thing to me is always going to be those mixes, because that's how I heard them back then. Well, and it- if there's no reason to buy a box set like this if they're not using the American Masters on every single song. Mm -hmm. However, (laughs) at the same time, and this is why I have mixed feelings, there are plenty of people who listen to the Beatles 
that didn't actually listen so closely that they knew the mixes that well and studied it that well. You know, the problem with someone like myself <laughs> is that most of the people who I talk to about the Beatles are extremely knowledgeable and they're more geekish like me. And there are a lot of people who just listen to the music because those were the songs. They love the songs in, in that order, not necessarily because of the mixes. You know, they'd be happy just to have these CDs with these very same songs to represent those albums, regardless of the mixes. So not everybody thinks like me or thinks like us. And for those people, they'll be quite happy with this. Remember, there are a lot of people who didn't buy the CDs like that listener in 1987 right. that still have their vinyl. And if they listen to the Beatles, they may still listen to those same albums mm -hmm. all these years later. They didn't adapt to new technology. They didn't care about CDs. So for some people, well, hopefully they've adapted now. <laughs> you know, this is something they would welcome. So you can't be thinking only in terms of, I know for myself, I would buy it strictly for the mixes. That's the biggest reason. Not if, so much... But assuming uh, if we go, go to the argument that they're not using the original American mixes on most of the tracks, are you, st are you going to be happy that way? No, not at all. Okay. Okay, but for the people who would be happy and it's not that important to them what the mixes were, then I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. But I do think that those mixes should be preserved. And, and, even some, though, and some of them are. As, uh, uh, in, in, the, in the research that I did, um, I did find some of the mixes are preserved now. I mean, my, I, my I, argument I, is that they should all, every song, should be preserved. Mm -hmm. Because this was how people heard it in the United States. Mm -hmm. And it's so many millions of copies sold here in America that those mixes should be preserved. They should always be available. Mm -hmm. Okay, but for the people who don't care that much about that element of it, that really only care about they have the same 11, 12 songs on each album in that order with the same packaging and the same cover and the same liner notes, if that makes you happy, go for it. You know, yeah. and there are a lot of people who will be that way. They're not all like you and me. <laughs> well, I'm, I, again, I'm not, uh, since I haven't heard the whole set, you know, um, we only have the sampler to, to reference. So I'm going to hold off on on saying, uh, you know, a whole lot about anything except for the fact that they have, the general feeling out there appears to be that Capital has abandoned all of the U.S. mixes. That is not true. There are some definite, you know, U.S. mixes on the set. On the other hand, there is at least, one song that on the sampler that does not match the the U.S. album that should probably should, and I think that's you know I've, you take that for what it is. Let me let me start talking to specific tracks here. Okay. The first track on the sampler is "I Want to Hold Your Hand" in stereo. The U.S. the Capitol uh, Capitol Records version was mock stereo. Okay. The the version on the sampler is not it's true stereo okay it matches the remasters and the way the remastered version and the way i can tell is uh a minute and 53 seconds you can hear somebody underneath kind of singing ooh in the background and that's on the remastered version and it's not on the capital version all right and i listened to that over and over and over again i was going is that what i really heard and Darn, you know, I just kept, I listened to it numerous times, and it's there. So that's the remastered version. Well, that would disappoint me. That would disappoint you, except it probably sounds better than the the old version. Well, that's, but that's not the issue. <laughs> okay, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm throwing an argument out there. You, but take, I'm it just, for, you take it for what it is. I'm, I'm saying to you that it's irrelevant which is a better mix. Okay. Even if you thought the American mixes were horrible. If that's the way it was heard, that's how we should hear it on on this collection, in my opinion. Now, right. now one one song that is definitely the U.S. mix is Help, because as everybody knows, mm -hmm. the Help album, Help on the on the U.S. album has the orchestral introduction in front of it. Right. The sampler does too. The remastered did not. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that so there's one example 
of a song preserved, at least with the orchestral introduction. It sounded to me like the whole song was pretty much uh, matched the, the capital version. Also, it, it goes without saying here, if this matters to a lot of people, and it will, but in the case of Help and A Hard Day's Night, you're going to get all the instrumental music. Mm-hmm. That's, okay, true. So, That's true. So too. for some people, that's important. Right. Now, another interesting track, the third inter- interesting track that I found of interest was If I Fell, which is in stereo on the, on the sampler. Mm-hmm. Now, this is, this is another deviation. The Capital album, and, and I should point out, I didn't talk about the sources for the information. I, when I was doing all this A-being, um, I used the remasters. I also used a bootleg, and I'm not going to go into any details there, the, from the, the Capital albums. I also used the Capital albums sets. And I also you had mean, two, you mean the CDs from last the CDs, yeah. Okay. And I also had two points of reference. One was the book Every Little Thing by Mitch McGeer, co-authored by Mitch McGeary, and the other is Joe Brennan's uh, Usenet Guide to Beatles Variations, which if you've never seen it, look it up in Google. It's a great resource. It's it's a little uh, it's out of date because it hasn't been updated since the remasters came out, but it has the original recording variations including the US differences. And it's it's free to access. It's one of the you know you don't have to pay to get it, and you can print it all out. I remember printing it out and carrying it with me to Beetlefest and reading it on the plane to pass the time. That was uh, you know many many years ago. But um, so yeah, that's th- those are the sources of information I had for this. Mm-hmm. Now going into if I fell, if I fell had the has the double tracked Lennon. Uh, introduction, as it did on the stereo parlophone and something new. So okay. uh, did I say very? Did I say that, that was a variation? I'm sorry, I was talking, I'm, I was referring to something else. Um, but no, uh, if I fell uh, matches, it's it's okay. The U.S. according to Joe Brennan's uh, website, the uh, original um, United Art- Artists version, both on the stereo and mono releases, were in mono. So that's interesting. Hmm. Another track is, um, and I love her in mono, uh, mono remastered from A Hard Day's Night had the double track McCartney intro, but this one has the single the single track United Artists version. So there's another instance of where it matches up. Um, the, the mono, by the way, the mono for the most part, I didn't really spend too much time with the mono tracks. But they sound better um, than the capital versions. I assume they use the the um, remasters for all of them, and they all sound um, they all sounded a, a little better um, sound uh, sonically. They all, mm-hmm. they all seem to be um, better mixed than the the capital. But again, we're talking bootlegs on those, so uh, on some of them. Um, the uh, I thought the mono one sounded okay on the, the from the sampler. So all right, but those are the the big differences that I found, or the the big the tracks that, I, that really needed to be highlighted. So in other words, you have some that match and some that don't. I again, I don't want to I don't want to judge what they've done yet until I've heard the whole box set because I you know I haven't, but it's it's hard to say on the basis of just hearing a sampler, and I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not going to go there as far as what they've done and what they've haven't done, what they haven't done. Mm-hmm. Um, who knows? After you know, after I hear the box, I may, you know, be happy with what they've done. I will. I mean, I will say, listening to the Capitol album sets over the years, you kind of grimace a little bit because of those mixes. I mean, yeah, I I hear what you're saying about the mixes are what you know are what we grew up with, and yeah, but. You know, I don't know that uh, it's going to be such a bad thing uh, with what they've done. You know, uh, I, it, it all depends. I mean, to be very honest here, I don't go back and listen to the American CDs all that go. often. But but I will say that about a year ago, just for the hell of it, and I don't know why I picked it, I pulled out Beatles 6, and I listened to the stereo version of it. And it sounded wonderful to me. Mm-hmm. And it sounded very full and rich, and it had like a fat sound to it. And I had been so used to 
the 87 CDs and the sounds from them, and I just thought it sounded better at that time. So I wasn't so disappointed with it. But every now and then, I'd like to have the option of going back and listening to those mixes, if I feel like it, anytime I want to, on CD. I'd like to have that. Yeah, okay. and, and... Also, one other thing, and, and I, I know I brought this up a few times on the show, whether you like it or not, and I still miss, sometimes, the reverb on a lot of those records. Mm -hmm. I mean, I Feel Fine and She's a Woman are a case in point of a single that I remember so much for the, the reverb that when... The CDs came out in 87, and even now, as much as I love the sound, I, I'm st I still feel like it's lacking. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with I Want to Hold Your Hand. And one thing I did pick up from listening to the sampler was that there was a touch of reverb on uh, Matchbox. Mm -hmm. And also, Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby. I, I, I did a comparison with on Matchbox, and I, I, in fact, I listened to that really closely and I did not, not think that the reverb was as strong in the U.S. album version as it was on the Capitol version. At least that was my opinion. But again, I, you know, it depends on what you're listening, you know, what you're listening on and, and stuff. And I'm, and I'm not, you know, sitting in a studio listening to it. So uh -huh. it's hard to say. But, you have to take the time and compare every single version there. And, and I'm sure there are people out there that will do that. Right. And, you know, and come with all sorts of ideas and stuff and, and you know, fine. And and you're not going to you're not going to please everybody no matter what. Um, and, you know, I can't remember back when the Capitol albums first came out, if everybody was was really happy with with those albums or not. I know. Well, actually, they weren't because there were people that were saying, you know, I can't. I couldn't stand the Capitol albums. Why? You know, why put them out? There were there were strong opinions before the sets before the first set was issued. Uh -huh. Because I remember I, uh, for those of you that have followed my work for a long time, you'll know that before the albums were even discussed, or before the sets were even formally discussed, I had a poll on my website for a long time. Asking if people would be would like them to come out, and uh, and the response was 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 incredible. And uh, I, as I recall, the the pros were more than the negatives, but it wasn't that far off. It wasn't that far off. Well, so a lot of people were, probably got used to the to the CDs. Yeah, that's probably what it was. And and there were also people. I mean, there were also people. And this was a worldwide thing too. So there were people. You know in England and in Germany and everything that had no interest in hearing the American CDs, which is funny because uh, as a collector, I remember getting, you know, German vinyl for the German Ma Magical Mystery Tour mixes and Japanese vinyl because of the Japanese variations and stuff. And, you know, so, I mean, that kind of thing always interested me. Um, but I guess the U.S. albums were kind of in a category by themselves, you know. Right. Well, that's another thing that I wanted to bring up here is the fact that if I was a Beatle fan somewhere else in the world and I was curious about the American albums and I bought, you know, these songs, these recordings, I wouldn't be getting a true representation of how it came out. So, well, and let's just say, for example, that Capitol does release Volume 3 with Yesterday and Today and Revolver and whatever else they want to throw into the package, there still might be some confusion. <laughs> with so many tracks out there on iTunes and, and, you know, which one are you buying? You know, there's so many, I don't know, I think that it would create more of a problem. Somehow. I would I would think that, yeah, well, I would too. Revolver, by the way, is included in the new set. But I think, if anything, and I'm going to cross my fingers and I'm just, I'm not making a formal prediction, I wish I could say that, uh, you know, it's definitely going to happen, but I would love to have the, the Hollywood Bowl album out. So, oh, sure. Uh, I'm hoping if, if Capitol Records, if you're listening, please put out the Hollywood Bowl album, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I think that would that'd be one thing that we'd all love to have. And I'm right. sorry, actually, it's not coming out uh, at the beginning of the year. Um, but anyway, we, we both have similar and, and, and mixed feelings. Yeah, about this, but um, you know, it, it it may be that it, it, it down the line, most people, and I by most people I mean, 
the general public will be content with what's happening with the way this set comes out. The fact that a commercial release rather than a, an archival release, um, you know, there's always going to be those who aren't. You can never please everybody, but I wish that, you know, Capitol had finished the job by putting out Volume 3. I think that would have made much more sense. But, um, you know, like, like we said, you can't please everybody. Everybody has different demands right. of what they want from the American releases. To me, I care more about the mixes. That's far more important to me than the album covers and the liner notes and everything else. It's always been more about the music. Not that everything else doesn't matter to me, but if I really... It's more a document of the times mm -hmm. of going back, listening to the way we heard it back then. I want to be able to do that anytime I want to. So for me, if I really care about that, I'm just going to use the box sets from the last decade. Right. Volume well, 1 and 2. Again, you know, we have those box sets. And... You know, we, that's a that's a good thing uh, for people who want to have those mixes. Um, for people who just want to hear the songs and hear some of the differences. I mean, uh, I'm looking through you for one. It's not on the sampler, but I'm obviously real anxious to hear if they did the uh, the um, the mistake um, <laughs> with that. So I sure uh, I sure hope they that they got it right this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's that's one thing. Um, Sometimes I wonder if they intentionally make a mistake so that it becomes more of a collector's item, and it well, boosts that sales. One, I think that one was, a, as I recall, was a capital issue. That was not, because obviously it didn't um, go out as, as um, you know, it didn't go out to, with the British album. So one point that needs to be made about this whole issue is that, um, and I think I think he said this when we talked to him, when... We talked to Peter Asher about the stereo mixes that Capitol put out. Uh -huh. He made the point that, and at least he made it to me when I talked to him, that Peter and Gordon did not want those stereo mixes. For them, the mono mixes was the, you know, was what they preferred. Uh -huh. In this particular case, at this point in time, the remasters is what the remasters are what the Beatles want out. So that this is their preference. This is their choice. They're in control obvi for obvious reasons. They're mm -hmm. in control. So I guess that's part of the thinking here. And you can, you can hate that. You can love it. You can, you know, you can embrace it. You can criticize it. But, you know, they, it's, historically, that's the way they want these things to, to look or to sound. And, I mean, I think that just needs to be said. Um, okay. So... And there's, it's probably, it's not going to work with a lot of people. Obviously, there's going to be, and and with the complaints I've seen on a couple of message boards, uh, you know, everybody's going to scream bloody murder. But well, I, you know, my point of view is I, I don't agree with that. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. agree if, if this is Paul and Ringo and and the Beatles family is making this decision together. I don't agree with it because to me that's that's changing history. That's revising history. So. But like I said, there are a lot of people that didn't really pay as careful attention to the audio. They're not audiophiles. They're just songs that they grew up with. Right. And again, we don't know to what extent things, um, you know, things are going to be like because we haven't heard the entire set. As of the day on the day we we're recording this, we have not heard the set. The set is not out yet, mm -hmm. um, and we have not received, you know, advanced copies. So, you know, the only thing we have to go by is the sampler. Like I said, I will say that uh, the mono tracks do sound better than, uh, using the remasters than using the the capital versions, and I think that's probably an improvement. But, but like um, I said, that's to me that's irrelevant. It doesn't. No, that, not necessarily. Well, because just, just the way I'm, again, I don't want I don't want to hammer this into the ground. But no. very often this is referred to by people who hated those mixes as the bastardization <laughs> no, and of, I, of and those I, masters. And I'm and and. I, you know, I've run, uh, I've, I've heard Dave Dexter, uh, a, an audio clip of Dave De Dexter talking about it. You know, they, they did, you know, I'm not going to justify what they did because I didn't like the idea of them doing that in the 60s, but they did it. So, and I'm not trying to, I don't know, it sounds like I'm probably trying to talk out of both ends of my mouth here the way I'm talking. I'm, I'm just trying to be logical, you know, and, and discuss this, you know, without uh, coming down on, 
Yeah, everybody. but again, this is how you heard it in the 60s. You weren't being judgmental because you had nothing else to compare it to. That's true. So this is the way we heard it, and that's how we should be hearing it now if we're buying the Capitol CDs. That's just my opinion. Again, that's right. Not everyone's going to agree with me, but uh, you know, that's how I look at it. It's changing history. If you're, I know, you know, the 2009 remasters sound phenomenal. <laughs> Kudos to all the engineers that worked on it. It is great. It's the way I love to hear it now. But if I want to go back in time and hear the music the way I first heard it and try to remember that, because it's been a while, I want to hear the way it came out mm -hmm. here. And that's just me. So there you have we'll, it. We'll see, the, we'll see the final result when we, when we get the set. So okay. There. All right, so if you would like to comment on this show, if you want to roast us over the coals, <laughs> yes, or you might agree with me, uh, uh, or you might even uh, agree with me, maybe, <laughs> if you could figure it out. You can write to us at things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. And if you want to get in touch with us individually, you can write to me at every little thing at att.net. And you can write to Steve where? at beatlesexaminer at gmail.com, where you can catch me on my Facebook page that has a big picture of my uh, the cover of my book at the top. Uh, What's uh, the name of that book, Steve? It's called Meet a Monkey, Davy Jones. Mm. We, mm. Got, we should do a show on that. You should. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm more than willing to, to talk about that, actually, because yeah. he talks a lot about the Beatles in that book. All right, so four things we said today. This is Ken Michaels thanking all of you for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying, can't wait for that U.S. album box to come out, <laughs> and we'll see you next time.